There's a familiar sound, huh? OK, so this is a privacy screen built by a guy. OK, you'll notice there's a whole theme going on. You'll notice that if you were staying with a guy like this, whose name might be David, and he said, here, you can have the living room. Just use this privacy screen. Well, would you want to? <laughs> OK, because, OK. I'm not getting undressed in front of that, or behind it for that matter. Now you need a privacy screen if you've got relatives visiting, if you've made a big mess and you want to just disguise it temporarily or permanently, or if you are involved in little theater and need a place to practice your entrances, or, or if your children want to do theater. Okay, so um, we're going to build one. He, he's done a really cool thing. He, he put muslin on a barbed wire fence. and and sprayed it with coffee and the rust came off and it looks really like ragged and cool and he grommeted he used these very beautiful little copper pins to pin the dowels in place he's done some really creative things so i'm going to steal all those ideas but i've got my own screen going on over here and it's more feminine you see i've got a curvy angle instead of that dog-eared thing it's very feminine so i'm going to show you how to do a few of these things and um, steal some of his tricks and come up with a design that is ultimately flattering to your home and to your personality. So the first thing to do is lay the wood flat and grab a compass. You know, remember these from geometry? Put the pointy bit in the middle of the board. And to do that, you, of course, want to measure because you never know if the board is going to be exact. Even though it's one by four material, it's um, dimensionalized to three and a half inches. So the middle point is going to be one and three quarters. So right about there. And then just lay the pointy bit in there. Stretch the lead over to the edge of the board. Grab the little twiddly bit up top. And around you go. That gives you a nice arc. Then we're going to cut that. I didn't get that other side very well. I'm going to cut that using a jigsaw, an electric jigsaw. You can also use a coping saw, which is a, a little hand tool. Um, but for now, just to speed things up, I'm going to use a jigsaw. Make some noise. So with jigsaws, this is a great saw, actually, because um, the little blade can cut through metal or wood. Um, they're just very, they give you variety, is what they give you. Um, the first thing, too, before you actually cut it is to clamp the board down. And you can do two at once if you're hot dogging, but for today, I'm just going to do one board at once. So I'll clamp that. And give yourself enough room to maneuver your jigsaw, too. I'll put another one up close so that it's steady. Then you want to wear these things because the jigsaw throws up a rooster tail of sawdust at times. Oh, and plugging in the jigsaw is always a start. I mean, you would have realized it eventually because it would have been really quiet. Got my little power bar on my bench here, OK? There we go. Now, it looks a little bit hacked up. Um, and that's, that's a pine thing. It's really, really soft wood. You can tell it's soft wood because you can actually make a dent in it with your fingernail. If, that, if this were a hardwood, that would not be possible for my tender nails. So you can clean that up with um, some sandpaper. Or sometimes I use a metal file, because um, they're not supposed to be for wood, but they do a nice, aggressive job. This little tool is called a sand bow. Isn't that cool? Because it's sort of it's flexible, so it takes the shape of whatever you're sanding. OK, so I'll um, cut another board just like this one, and then we'll be ready to um, cut it to length. And I'll show you a couple other cool t tips to make it look ever so professional. At the beginning of a carpentry project, a novice has that feeling of anticipation. With experience, however, she becomes more mellow, having made many mistakes. That's why there aren't any old carpenters who are perky. They've learned. Okay, look, smooth. 
sharp. Ow. Okay, so you want to make it smooth. And you, you want to know how to do that? You use a cornering tool. Look, it's the most cool little tool. There it is, right there. Pretty. And the easiest way to use it is to put, now you can sand if you want to, but I'm just showing you some options, because a girl needs options. Okay, this mat prevents it from moving around. Um, there's, it's, it's sharp, so watch what happens. Perfect, smooth. Isn't that great? Clean it up. And now the grain of the wood changes as you go down the wood, so sometimes you have to go in the opposite direction. See, look, if I go this way, it binds. That means you're not using it correctly. You have to go in the other direction, because it shouldn't bind. Pretty. You can change the size of the radius that you're getting by using the different end of the tool. That gives you a, a smoother, rounded off corner. OK, so I'll finish doing this. And other side. We're not really defined by our limitations. What truly shapes us is our reactions to our limitations. Becoming upset is a sign of immaturity. You're only young once, but you can stay immature indefinitely. Okay, I measured two and a half inches down to make my mark here, and five and a half up from the bottom. Don't know why, I just didn't want to do the equidistant thing. So now I'll just mark it, and then drill it, make sure it's in the center, which it pretty much is. Okay, and safety glasses on when you're drilling. By the way, I cut these boards to length, um, to my own height, actually, because it's sort of a number I can usually remember. But you can make them any height you want. Oh, and let me just mention, there's a third board on the bottom now. That's because the uh, drill tends to blow the wood out the bottom of the, the bottom board. So you want a scrap piece on the bottom so that you don't get a messy opening. take a little rolled up bit of sandpaper and clean up the hole a little bit so that it's not too ugly. Like so. There, and I'll just get rid of the clamps and we'll flip the boards open. The dowel, um, I was using a half inch drill bit because my, my doweling is a half an inch. See how I've taken a little slice in the top of the Dowel, that's because um, it fits into the hole better if it can compress a little bit. Otherwise, it's uh, a very tight fit in the hole. And that is, uh, well, some people like it that way, but I like to be able to just move it in, OK? So I'm going to spread these out, get rid of my scrap bit, and open them up. Now, the only saw that you'll be able to do this little slice with is a fine-toothed back saw. This happens to be a Japanese saw, but you want the spine on it, and I'll show you why. This is the end I haven't done yet. Oh, no, it's done. This one. OK, it's done. <laughs> Isn't that great being middle-aged? Because, you know, you just don't see as well as you used to. But you're smarter. OK, so you have that advantage. And if you think this is smarter, you should see what I was like when I was uh, a young woman. OK, there it goes. See how easy that is? But I'm telling you, any other saw is going to be really frustrating. So try to use a very fine-toothed one. OK, now, OK, and then the next thing to do is put a little bit of glue on the end of the dowel. It acts as a bit of a lubricant, as well as, of course, it seals the joint at the end so that it doesn't go every time you move the screen. Although you might like that sound. Might be one of your favorites. But this gives you the option. Okay, so 
it's really sticky. So give it a whack with the old wooden mallet if you have one or a hammer. And then you can kind of feel underneath that it's not through yet, so give it another slug. Oh, you know what? Put these on. Anytime you're hitting anything and you're squinting, that's a sign from your body that it's maybe good to protect your eyes. Oh, that's such a nice smooth fit. Look at that, huh? Mmm, smooth. Okay, now the other end. Ah, uh, there it is. When you get to the point in your day when you're slamming things and making big noises and feeling exuberant, you're cresting is what you're doing. In carpentry, we call that cresting. You know that you're almost done and nothing can stop you now, except really bad luck. Mm, almost. Beautiful. Oh. Now, clean up the excess. All right, look. Sometimes there's, oh, <laughs> oops. Okay, well, so <laughs> I did the wrong board, but that's okay because I have more dowels to hammer in. Uh, and I'll do that. But uh, what I was starting to say is when you get a little bit of over secretion here, it's a good idea to just tidy that up right away because it will dry hard and clear and crusty and it will ruin the effect. <laughs> So I'm just using um, the sharp end of my compass to mark where the hinge goes. And the big secret is to clamp the two pieces together so that they're plumb and that this, this plane is the same. Otherwise, you're, you're going to have a real problem with hinges. And remember, I told you. Because oh, the part of the trouble is that oh, hinges are just tricky. Let me just stop right there. So. It's a little tricky because you're starting a screw at the same time as you're holding the hinge, but then you start hot dogging, which as I know, it's always a sign of almost immediate failure in some area. There we go. Okay, now the hinge, the, the zigzag thing, the way to get that to happen and not just a semicircle, is to hinge two of the pieces on one side and two of the pieces on the other side. That's the trick. And this is such soft wood that the brass screws don't even have to be pre-drilled. They just slide in like butter. Don't over tighten them because they're soft, soft metal and they'll strip out. The head will strip out. Just snug like that. I'm almost done this. When I'm back though, the best part comes because I'm not a sewer, so I'm not going to be uh, looking at put sewing together a little lacy sort of action on these. I got some other ideas. A respected man once said, in creating, the only hard thing is to begin. Wise words, although I don't think he'd actually ever made anything or he'd have known that near the end there's usually one really hard thing and it's worse because you weren't expecting it. I found some lace so I just went ahead and used it because you know it has that semi-transparent effect. So depending on who you've invited over to, you know, sleep in your living room, you might want to catch a glimpse of them. So there you've got your transparent option, okay? If you're not, if you're more going for the silhouette thing, then this is rice paper. And see, it's got, it's a little dowel that I put through it, so there's no sewing or gluing involved. And this, these are actually barbecue skewers, which is a nice juxtaposition, I believe, with the lace. It shows that you're, you know, a bit rowdy, but still feminine. Okay, now the last thing I wanted to do is show you a completely opaque treatment, which would be grass cloth. If whoever's on the other side of that screen, you don't want to see it all, this is the stuff to go with, okay? And I'm going to grommet it on, but um, 
I should have probably done the grommeting before I hinged that last piece, but I wasn't thinking ahead, you see, but you'll do better. All right, so here's the deal. I'm gonna put this up on the um, bench here so that I can get at the grommeting. And this is the piece I'm gonna be working on, so. Okay, uh, there's, a, there's a point at which you need to have a three-dimensional aptitude. <laughs> and depending on the time of day, it may have escaped you horribly. So, I'll just, uh, <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, I'm not cresting though. That was a loud noise, but it's not because I'm cresting. Okay, far from it, really. <laughs> okay, just, um, <laughs> okay. Oh, that would have been my finger. Okay, good. Okay, that's nothing. All right, so I'm um, grommeting, okay? I've just learned to use the grommeting tool. Well, I have a, a grommeter, but it's old, and it's, it works sort of on a plier system, but it wasn't heavy duty enough, so I've got this one. So I'm gonna roll out the grass cloth and fold it over. And um, like this. Okay, and then um, this is the top, so I, I'll, I'll save that because I want to do my practicing on the bottom because the, the first ones might not be perfect. So I'll just come back to that later, and I'll go up here, giving myself lots of slack. Okay, so grommeting is done using these three tools. This is the block, or the seat. This is the punch. This is the set, all right? I'm gonna use some nice, soft, solid brass grommets, like little tiny treasures, okay? And the way that, that, that this works is you always punch. You've gotta make a hole first for the stuff to work. You make a little punch and you and you do it on wood so and you'll be wearing the protective gear oh I busted my glasses <laughs> oh my God. it's just that kind of a day really um, so I'm gonna put my protective piece of wood under so that when I punch I'm golden so I'm just gonna Put the punch about where I want my grommet to go, and I'm going to wail on it, okay? Once, and watch what happens. Bingo, I got a smart little hole there, okay? Now, I feed the male grommet, and believe me, I've named them all, and I know which sex they are. So he goes up through like that. Then I put the little seat underneath him, and then I put the female, which is this little um, sort of aperture-like piece, right there. And I'm going to um, put the set, okay, which I've, oh, there it is. The set's going to curl that metal over the top and form a nice little rim, like this. Okay, ready? Then I, I'm just going to, okay. It's stuck, so you just use a little screwdriver to pry it loose. And, okay, it didn't work. <laughs> That's because I didn't hit it hard enough, okay? It's no big deal. It happens all the time. Ask any professional grommeter. So I'm just going to hit it again. Okay, feels good. And... Okay, 
That'll do. Okay, so now I got to put four more of these in. <laughs> Um, and then more at the bottom, and then another really good part happens. There, see how pretty? I, I, got, I really got the hang of the grommeting thing too, so, you know, the first one's a bit ugly, but after that it was great. Look, look at this one though. This is made by Carl Beck. He's a wood crafter. He does beautiful work, and so you can see the precision that you get over time if you work at this as opposed to the lack of precision that I have, but I'm just a beginner, so cool, eh? And um, this is, is extremely opaque. Uh, this grass cloth, I'm really liking this grass cloth. See, this wire, I hammered this. It's just copper wire. I hammered it to make it flat. And the grommets are good. And it's completely not transparent. A project may be difficult, but we're never more fully ourselves than when we've built something, rendering ourselves in some small way immortal. Sort of.